Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here and welcome to our 8.3 tier list for all things melee. In this video, we're going to be ranking all of the relevant melee classes and then placing them into our tier list. We're going to be having four separate tiers, S+, S, A and B tier. We'll be giving you our reasoning behind this and what makes these classes so strong and also giving you a quick breakdown of the compositions available to these classes. So let's get straight into it. Starting off with our S plus tier, these classes are the best of the best and bring it all when it comes to arena. Assassination rogues are no stranger to our highest tier and are going to be the first addition to our S plus tier. Strong lockdown with a six second stun, every diminishing return from kidney shot, the utility from Vanish being able to cheap shot and garrote silence and even a long duration kick with a short cooldown. But that's not all you need to get into our S plus tier. Assassination also brings incredibly strong consistent damage on top of their lockdown with the ability to deal insane burst damage during their vendetta window. Strong passive slows coming from crippling poison, good uptime with sprint freedom and shadow step, and even a mortal strike effect from their wound poison. Combine all of this with just how hard they are to kill due to both cloak of shadows and evasion on top of their low cooldown feint, add this all up and you can see why assassination makes it into our S plus tier once again. Although even classes this high on our tier list are not without their weaknesses. Assassination rogues are very reliant on their team members right now, which is their number one weakness. Without a good mage, rogues can really struggle. Rogues are extremely susceptible to dying inside of stuns and from being trained down by melee cleaves. Unless you rotate your defensives well, you can quite easily die. Rogues are actually quite limited when it comes to meta comps, despite being S plus tier with the strongest comps all being when paired up with a mage, RM Pala, Rogue Mage Druid and RMP. Moving on, we have our second and final addition to our top tier, and a new one at that, Windwalker. Windwalkers have unrivaled burst damage coming from their Touch of Death and their Fist of Fury combined with their Storm, Earth and Fire. The major flaw Windwalkers had before 8.3 was their lack of sustained damage, and with the buffs to Rising Sun Kick and Blackout Kick, that's been solved, with Windwalkers now having extremely strong sustained damage on top of their already insane burst and stacked AoE damage. Not only that though, Windwalkers are king when it comes to defensive cooldowns, having access to a wall, the immunity of Touch of Karma, and even a magic immunity, not to mention even when Fists of Fury in, they're immune to melee damage. On top of their insane mobility, having a short cooldown port, rolls, flying serpent kick, and even a freedom at their disposal. Now, what separates Windwalkers from most melee is their utility. Windwalkers are great at enabling casters and peeling for their team, with the ability to give Tiger's Lust to teammates, Ring of Peace to peel, and just general roots, disarms, and even paralyzes to keep your team safe. Honestly, I struggle to think of any weaknesses Windwalkers have right now. They sort of bring it all, although what they do lack is a short cooldown stun, only having Leg Sweep at their disposal, which makes them a little less favorable than a rogue would be for a mage, for instance meaning Windwalkers are best paired with another melee, bringing stuns such as a Demon Hunter or a Death Knight. Windwalkers are also very susceptible to dying inside of stuns versus high damage compositions like Rogue Mage, due to having no defensives that they can use whilst they're stunned. Now, in terms of compositions, Windwalkers primarily do well in melee cleaves, such as Windwalker DK Mistweaver, Windwalker Demon Hunter Healer, but are also viable in compositions like Windwalker Lock Shaman or Windwalker Fire Mage Holy Pala or a Discipline Priest. Okay, so next we're gonna be dropping down a tier into our S tier, but I must stress that these classes are still incredibly strong. They just fall a little short compared to our S plus tier classes for numerous reasons. First up then, we've got Demon Hunters. Now, Demon Hunters are without a doubt strong right now. They bring insane burst damage during their metamorphosis and with it being up for a large portion of arena games, they actually bring decent consistent damage. And you can't mention Demon Hunters strengths without bringing up Mana Rift. 
Mana Rift represents a critical win condition for Demon Hunters having the ability to eventually oom healers and win the game that way. Utility is also often not something Demon Hunters are associated with, but actually they bring some good tools in both Reverse Magic and Darkness. However, don't get me started on Demon Hunters mobility. Demon Hunters tend to be all over the place, backflipping, flying, dashing, they have it all and are amongst the most mobile melees in the game right now. You also can't mention Demon Hunters without noting on their insane self healing, having the ability to leech and passively outheal a lot of incoming damage. So where Demon Hunters fall short is in their lack of compositions. Demon Hunter can only really play melee cleaves and this is down to a few reasons. First is their lack of a consistent slow. Demon Hunters actually can be qu kited quite well by a lot of classes due to them not having a slow. Things like mages can be a huge pain. One of the main reasons they are only viable in a few compositions though is their lack of a mortal strike effect. Although they do high damage, not having that healing reduction can mean healers having a very easy time healing through the pressure. They also suffer from the major weakness of being incredibly fragile when caught inside of stuns and the fact they rely on leech heavily to survive means that they can be very easily bursted down. Moving on to compositions, Demon Hunter really doesn't have much variety. You're basically stuck playing two cleaves, with the two viable ones being Windwalker Demon Hunter with a Monk or Restoration Shaman Healer and then DHDK which can be played with a variety of healers. Next up on the list and still inside of our S tier, we've got Death Knights. Now we're going to group up both Frost and Unholy as they're both good in the same compositions but just better in certain matchups. Death Knight's strengths consist of very high consistent and burst damage, with Unholy being a little more on the consistent side whilst Frost has that huge burst coming from Chill Streak, whilst also having some of the highest self healing in the game coming from their Death Strike. 200k Chaos Bolt, no worries, heal to full with Death Strike. DKs are also great at enabling other classes in melee cleaves due to Death Grip. Death Grips into Leg Sweep or Chaos Novas are at the core of why these cleaves are so powerful right now. And I don't think I could talk about DK strengths without mentioning Chains of Ice. Chains of Ice is just broken right now, having the ability to slow the entire enemy team from range by 70% at will is very frustrating to play against to say the least. Death Knights are also notorious for their disruption, having a wide array of micro CCs to interrupt your cast and just in general make your life a misery. But as always, there are weaknesses and Death Knights are no exception. Death Knights have always had huge mobility issues, having only Wraith Walk to connect to their targets mean they can often struggle for uptime on a lot of classes and result in them being easily kited. Not to mention Death Knights really don't have any strong defensive cooldowns against melee cleaves, other than Icebound Fortitude which is in turn on a 3 minute cooldown, resulting in them being very fragile when facing high damage cleaves. Also, as a lot of Death Knights defensive capabilities are tied into their self healing, they suffer with longer games due to the dampening mechanic. Like a few melee on this list, Death Knights are limited mainly to melee compositions and have a few strong ones at that, mainly being Death Knight Windwalker Healer or when paired up with a Demon Hunter, with TSG being a little weaker than the other two. So we've had our first four classes now, compiling our S plus and S tiers. We're going to now drop down one tier to our A tier. These classes are of course going to still be viable and have some strong compositions, although objectively they're just going to be a little weaker than the other two tiers. To kick things off inside of our A tier, we've got Warriors. Warriors have been heavily overshadowed in recent times, lacking a lot of the defensive and mobility capabilities of other classes, but let's start off by taking a look at their strengths. Warriors are a great addition to any team due to their high utility, being able to duel, war banner, disarm and even rallying cry to peel for their team results in them being incredibly versatile. They also bring good damage to the table, with high consistent damage and even decent spread cleave with their deep wounds, blade storm and sweeping strikes. A lot of warriors power is tied into sharpened blade and their mortal strike effect. When combined with the high burst damage capable of other classes, it can often make healing through it an impossible task. Moving on to their weaknesses, so far on this list every melee has had good defensive options or high self healing or even both in some cases. 
Warriors are heavily lacking in this department, having next to no self healing. Warriors also lack lockdown, having only Stormbolt at their disposal and Intimidating Shout on a hefty cooldown. Combine this with their weak mobility and you can see why Warriors didn't make it higher up onto this list. As for compositions, Warriors are quite limited, having TSG, Warrior Mage Mistweaver and DH Warrior as their strongest compositions right now. Next up on the list we've got Retribution Paladins, often heavily underrepresented but still decent in certain compositions built around them. Now, Ret's first strength will not come as a surprise to anybody, and that's their burst damage during their wings. Without a doubt, when it comes to melee, Ret has the highest burst in the game when they have their cooldowns up, whilst also bringing great team utility with Hand of Sack, Blessing of Protection, Freedom and even some decent off hills, whilst also having both Kings and Wisdom. Although that's about it for Rhett Paladin strengths, but their burst damage is really all they need. Moving on to weaknesses, Rhett's major one for pretty much as far back as I can remember is going to be their mobility. Often referred to as the wheelchair class, Rhett really lacks any consistent form of a gap closer. Also their damage outside of wings is pitiful, going quickly from the highest burst damage to the lowest, outside of their cooldowns. Also defensive wise, Rhett's are not very strong. Once Bubble is down, it's going to be pretty much over. However, Rhett still have some very good compositions available to them. Rhett sub Holy Pala is built entirely around the Rhett's burst and great at enabling you. Warrior Rhett on the other hand does decently well into other melee cleaves. Up next, we've got our only viable hunter spec which is going to be Survival. Survival Hunter's main strength is always going to be their control, bringing both a strong stun from Intimidation, Roots and of course Freezing Trap, whilst also having great utility in the form of Roar of Sacrifice, the ability to knock enemies with High Explosive Trap, the pills from Tracker's Net and even Mending Bandage against the popular Assassination Rogue compositions. They also have a unique strength in the fact that they're able to deal a lot of their damage from range, even outside of their aspect of the eagle. Survival's biggest weakness though is honestly just their lack of self healing and the meta right now, often finding it hard to kill teams inside of their CC chains. This also brings a lot of limitations when it comes to compositions. Combine all this with their lack of defensive cooldowns outside of the long cooldown aspect of the turtle and you can see why hunters have seen better days. As I mentioned, hunters are very limited when it comes to compositions having only really the one noteworthy comp in Jungle Cleave. Moving on, still in our A tier, we've got the Feral Druid. Ferals, like a few melee in our A tier, have fallen quite heavily out of the meta of heavy cleaves and hard to kill melee. Nonetheless, let's take a look at their strengths and weaknesses. Feral's first strength is of course going to be their mobility. Having the ability to shift slows on demand and gain extra movement speed on top of also having a gap closer results in them having a very easy job maintaining uptime on even the most mobile of classes. They also bring some very good crowd control now having access to Cyclone on top of their two stuns and entangling root, whilst also having the ability to offer some great healing utility to their team. When picking up Restoration Affinity, Feral Droids are able to deal very good healing. Feral also deals very good burst coming from their 5 combo point Ferocious Bites, which in turn then activates their Ferocious Wound, reducing the target's health. But of course, being in our A tier, Ferals have their weaknesses. First up is their lack of a healing reduction effect. This often limits compositions and requires you to bring something special to the table, which Feral really doesn't right now. Feral Druids are also insanely squishy when caught out of their form, having their only defensive survival instincts often now used as an offensive tool and not being able to be used when caught inside of a stun means you can often die incredibly fast. And if you're in bear form, you can't really do damage. So unlike most classes, you don't have the option of having both defensive and offensive capabilities at the same time. Moving on to compositions, Ferals are again very limited and have one noteworthy composition in Jungle Cleave. Our final addition going into our A tier is going to be Sub Rogue. 
Sub isn't by any means bad, more so just heavily outshined by its assassination counterpart. Sub has extremely high burst in small windows during Shadow Dance. You can also bring very high lockdown with the ability to stun three times every single time it's off diminishing returns. This also gives them great pills to help your team survive or even enable them to get off casts. Although Sub's biggest weakness and what kills the spec is its lack of consistent damage, having basically zero damage outside of their burst windows. Sub also doesn't bring a strong mortal strike effect. Although they do have it, it's only 15% with assassination bringing 30%. As for compositions, Sub can play a lot of similar comps to Asa, although they are a lot weaker. Sub fire with either a disc or resto druid is the strongest composition, with ret sub holy pala being a close second. Dropping down now to our final tier, which is B, we've got our last spec worth mentioning, and that's going to be Enhancement Shaman. Enhance has honestly seen better days. I myself am somebody who plays Arena quite often, on both high and lower MMRs, and I'm yet to see an Enhancement Shaman, which is just testament to how weak they are right now. Now, as for strengths, Enhance really doesn't have that many. They have some decent bursts during their cooldowns with Bloodlust, but that's about it damage wise, on top of having some good utility with grounding and hex and even pretty good off hills. But their weakness far outweighs the strengths. Enhance is extremely RNG dependent and has very low consistent damage, as well as being insanely squishy, only having a long cooldown wall as their defensive. But yeah, honestly, there isn't much more to say about Enhance. They're just not in a good spot at the moment and hopefully get some love soon. As for comps, the only really semi-viable comp I'd see working is Turbo, but even then, it's always going to be an uphill battle. Alright then guys, that's it for our best melee of 8.3 tier list. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out our caster and healer version coming out shortly.